Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here. Welcome to the channel. And welcome to Zombicide Black Plague, chapter the first of Dance Macabre, the introduction quest of Zombicide Black Plague. We're all set up and we're all ready to go. But just before we do, just a couple of things. If you get a chance, um, there are a couple of excellent video series out there for Zombicide Black Plague. One is by Doug Herring. He did it over Christmas and he does Quest 1. So I've been looking at that, getting some tips. The good thing that uh, about Doug's playthrough is he's got all the he's got all the zombie sides right back to the very beginning and he's got a really good handle on the gameplay. So it's well worth looking at Doug's playthrough. I certainly found it helpful in preparing for mine. And another good video is by uh, Learning to Play Games. He did a short video, about half an hour or so, about how to play Zombicide Black Plague. Found that very, very helpful as well. So anybody who's looking to for Learn to Play videos, they are definitely worth a look. Probably more than mine, because I'll make a load of mistakes. Righty oh oh and one more thing as well regarding the miniatures and the painting there's another chap out there a guy called Robert Oren and he's got a channel and he does a lot of miniature painting the good thing about Robert's videos is they, they do get in on the ground level we're talking I think he's got um he's got a little segment on the dice tower board game breakfast he does painting 101 and it really is you know it's entry level stuff he does some great stuff and if you go to his site he's actually doing some longer versions of his little segments on the dice tower and he does a really good job he also does live painting um, i'd never do that because i can't talk and paint at the same time i have trouble videoing and talking at the same time but rob he does a lot of paint throughs and he's got some excellent advice if you've got any advice about if you want any advice about painting miniatures or anything pop across to his channel, it's excellent. Right, all that done, let's get on with the gameplay. So the first thing we do is we start with the player phase. So what are we going to do? Well, we've got to pick a first player. And the first player that we're going to pick is we're actually going to pick Silas. And the reason is we want him to get in and get out of this room because we have got to pick up this we have to pick up this token and that means we can actually open this door so that's the first thing to do the reason i want silas to do it is because if he goes in and comes out he can still shoot so that is what we are going to do so silas goes first He's got three actions. So what he's going to do is he is going to, first of all, use one action to move into this zone of this building. His second action is he's going to pick up this objective token. That will give him five experience points. So we'll move that along here. So one, two, three, four, five. So he's got five experience points, which is a good start. The next thing he's going to do is he's going to come out. And that is his third action. Right, after him, we have got Anne. Anne's next. And what Anne is going to do is she is going to go into this room. And when you go into a room, you can search. So she used one action to go into the room, and now she's going to use one action to search. And we have a deck here, I'll just bring it into shot, of these are your search cards, and these are your spawn cards. Uh, just a quick one about the spawn cards, because this is the introductory um, quest, we take all the necromancers out. I did say it is a little easier than it would be normally. So, after spending all that time painting the Necromancer, we're not actually going to use it because we take all the cards out. Similarly, if we do pull a spawn card that's got the Abomination on it, we won't pick the Abomination, we will pick a Fatty instead. 
that's just because it is the introductory episode. But we're not bothering about spawn cards at the moment, we're searching. So we pick the top of the search deck, and first up we find a torch, that's excellent. Now, if we search at a later date with Anne, and she still has the torch, we will be able to draw two cards when searching. Also, whilst we've got the torch, we can spend an action and discard the torch from hand, select a dragon mile token at range 0 to 1, and resolve a dragon fire. So we need this if we find some dragon bile. We don't need any dragon bile in this actual um, playthrough because we won't have any abominations. But we can still kill stuff. So we, if I, if I find some dragon bile, we'll probably use it anyway. Not only does it kill abominations, it kills pretty much anything. So we've got a torch and that'll be useful for searching. So she'll put that in her left hand. Having searched, she's got one action left. And with her last action, she's going to use her special ability, which is Bloodlust Melee. That allows her to move up to two spaces and have a free combat action. So she's going to move one, two, and she's going to use that combat action on this walker. So she gets a single dice because she's using the short sword, which is here. And we get one die, we need a four, four or better to deal one damage, which is enough to kill this walker. So let's go for it. And a six. Great start. So boom, we've got rid of a walker. That's brilliant news. That means that we get to put her up to one. So she's up to one experience. Fantastic. Excellent. So that is her go. After her, the next player is Baldrick. So what's Baldrick going to do? Baldrick is going to move into this room because he's going to search as well. So one action to move. Then he's going to search and he finds plenty of bolts. So you may re-roll all ranged attacks once with weapons with the bolts keyword. So if we have a crossbow or something like that, the new result takes the place of the previous one. On re-rolls in this game, say you were rolling two dice, one missed, one hit. If you choose to re-roll, you re-roll both of those dice. So you don't just re-roll your fails, you re-roll all the dice. So you've got to bear that in mind if you decide to do a re-roll. There is a chance you'll roll no successes and be worse off than you would have been. So, anyway, useless to him at the moment because he doesn't have a crossbow, but he'll put that in his backpack. That's Baldrick with a plenty of bolts in his backpack. Right, he's gone in there, he's done a search. What he's going to do next is he's just going to pop out to here. And I think we're pretty much going to do that with everybody. Clovis, he's next. He's going to bob into here and he's going to search as well. While we've not got many zombies on the board, let's try and find as much stuff as possible. So, and he finds some leather armour, which is useful. So, this leather armour be able to go in his body spot, his body slot, and it gives him armour 5+. plus. The way armour works is, normally, if you get attacked by any type of zombie, they will automatically do damage, unless you have armour. If you have armour, you get a sort of save. With leather armour, if he rolls a die and gets a 5 or a 6, then he will save against any damage. It's not the best armour, but it's better than nothing. Better than a slap across the belly with a wet kipper. So we'll put that into his body slot. And he's got one action left and he's going to move again. So he'll move back out here. After him, it's Nelly. Exactly the same for Nelly. Let's use the opportunity to go into the room 
and have a search. So, gonna have a search, and she's found a spell, she's found a scroll of speed. So, let's have a look at this. It's an enchantment, it does make noise. So, there's the little bell icon. So, you cast it, you will make some noise. It's an enchantment. Once per turn, select a survivor in a zone without zombies. He may immediately perform a free move action of up to two zones. That's very good. So, if we need somebody to really zoom off somewhere, this can be casted. So, excellent. We might want to give this to Baldrick. He's the best spell caster. But, as it stands, excellent stuff. She will put that in her backpack. Next up, she is going to use her final action to go back out into the street. After her, it's Samson. And Samson is going to pop into the little sort of room we have there and he's going to have a rummage around and he finds a shield excellent stuff so again can't be dual wielded now it would normally go in a hand slot but he can use it in his body slot as i'll show you in a second but let's just have a read at what it does we can choose one it's either armor 4 plus, so like the leather armor, except we'd have to roll a 4 or better. Or we can re roll once armor rolls are made with another equipped armor. So if he had the leather armor, for example, he'd be able to use the leather armor and use this as a re roll. But similarly, the re roll would mean that um, he'd have to discard what his previous roll was, whatever it was. The new result takes the place of the previous one. So he's going to put that shield here, just to let's show you. So here's his player area to play him at. As you can see, he can actually put a shield here. He doesn't have to put it in his offhand slot because it's one of the special things about being Samson. So there he goes. Apologies for the glare, but there we are. He's got that on his player tray now, so good stuff. And he's got one action left. And what he's going to do is he's going to pop out here. And here we are at the zombie phase. First thing that zombies do is activation. They attack or they move. Now, what's happened here is we haven't actually made any noise. This door was already open. So we didn't have to break it open. And that all anybody's done is gone in, done a bit of searching. And even the bit of combat we did when Anne killed the walker. Well, that was with a short sword and the short sword doesn't make any noise. Consequently, things as far as the runner's concerned and the fatty is concerned are exactly the same as they were 10 minutes ago when we started. Hence, they're not going to move anywhere. They couldn't move anyway because they've got closed doors. But for all intents and purposes, there's been no noise. They've got no intentions of going anywhere. They're just mooching around like they were at the start of the game. So, as they haven't moved, we have to do... We move on and we go to step two, which is spawn. We have one active spawn point, which is here. So let's pull a spawn card and read it. So this is a, a standard zombie invasion card. And as you can see, there are different levels. There's a red level, an orange level, a yellow level and a blue level. And these directly correspond to the experience tracks of the heroes. If any, if any hero was in yellow, for example, we would be looking at this line. As it is, we're all in blue. So we're going to pick the blue, which is one fatty, which isn't the best. Fatties, uh, we need two. We need two with a single hit, two damage with a single hit to kill it. But let's spawn it. So here he is, holding his guts in. He spawns here. And that's all he does. 
it's very important when we're levelling up our heroes and looking at experience points and what have you that we try and keep we try and keep everybody pretty level the reason is if somebody goes off on one and gets loads and loads of experience then all these are going to start triggering so if you've got somebody in the red when everybody else is in the yellow all those all those heroes that are in the yellow are going to have a really tough time of it because they won't have enough equipment or enough special abilities unlocked in order to take the zombie horde on so we've got to be it's one of the facets of the game where we've got to manage the experience we cannot let a couple of heroes just like wail away and get all the experience because it's going to cause problems for the rest of the group so bearing that in mind silas is already on five experience he only needs a couple more experience then he's in the yellow zone so we just got to bear that in mind when we're allocating kills and people to pick up um tokens or or what have you we've just got to bear that in mind but as it stands we've got a fatty not the best because we've only got samson that can kill him but there we go we can discard that and that is the end of the spawn phase right end phase is next and here we are at the end phase what happens in the end phase well if there were any noise tokens you know if we've made any noise during that round then what we do is we take those noise tokens off the board apparently i guess the zombies have got short attention spans after all they're undead so they'll react quickly to noise but they don't really have great memories so if you uh, stop making noise then they will calm down so that's what you do at the end phase you'll take any noise tokens off the board but we didn't have any to take off so that's fine the final part of the end phase is remove the first player token clockwise so the next player after silas is actually Anne. so Anne's going to be next player okay so that is the end of turn one of Zombicide Black Plague Dance Macabre. I think I'll do turn two because it's not been too exciting. We'll do turn two and then I'll gauge how long episodes are going to be to see how many turns I do in an episode. But I think we can, I think we can run to one more turn. I did uh, blabber on as I am now at the beginning of the episode. So we'll try one more turn and then we'll upload. Okay, so it's Anne to go. What's she going to do? Well, Anne, no use her taking this fatty on because she hasn't got the wherewithal to kill it. So what she is going to do is, as she's first player and she's got a short sword, she is going to try and open this door. Now, we will spawn zombies in here if she, do, if she does this, but we have got one, two, three, four, five, and a good self with um she's got a couple of actions left hopefully if she opens the door so hopefully we won't get a bad spawn in here and we'll be able to finish off a couple of things uh, uh, whatever whatever gets spawned in there so she's going to try and open the door so if you remember we've got the short sword and if we want to open the door it's going to create some noise but we have to roll a four or better so come on annie Let's give it a go, kid. A three, no! So she fails with the first go, and that is, there we go, we get a, a noise token. And she's gonna have another go with a second action. And she does it second time. So second time, she manages to force the door open. So we flick the token over, move her out of the way so you can see that. So the door is now open. There is a second noise token because she did it twice. So what we've got to do because we've opened this now is we've got to spawn zombies in this room. It's just this room because that door is closed and there's no other way into this room. So just that room. 
let's have a look and we get a walker remember we're still in the blue so we get one walker so we'll get rid of that pick up a walker who is in that room we've got one action left for Anne and Anne is going to use a special ability again she's going to use bloodlust melee it's a new turn so it's refreshed she can move up to two spaces she only has to move one and then she gets a free attack on this walker and she gets a six she is taking no prisoners and we've got rid of the walker that is an extra let's give her an extra whoop an extra point of xp so she's up to two that's good stuff and that is the end of her go so she's now in that room so we're making a bit of progress next up after Anne is Baldrick here's Baldrick and what he's gonna do is he's gonna move one for one action two for another action and for his final action he is gonna search again you can search there are no you can't search if there are any zombies in a room and you can only insert search inside you can't search out in the street no zombies Anne's just killed it so he's gonna have a search with his third action and he gets plate armor woo one of the things um i think this happened in doug's playthrough as well and i think it was baldrick um your wizards your magicians can wear plate armor it's not like um D, &D old i mean you might be able to do it in D, D now but old school years ago back in the mists of time the primeval swamps um obviously magic users never used to be able to wear plate but he can and this is obviously a really good stuff so he three plus so if he gets bitten by a zombie he just has a chance to roll and if he gets a three or better he will not get damaged so he's gonna equip that so that's pretty cool right so that is it for baldrick next up after baldrick it is clovis unfortunately clovis cannot actually take that uh, fatty on even though he's a knight he just doesn't have the he doesn't have a big enough weapon pardon the pun to take it on so what he's gonna do is he's gonna search as well so he's gonna use two of his actions to move into this room and then he is going to search and he finds plenty of bolts as well so again use this with ranged crossbows and stuff gives you opportunity for re-rolls so we will put that in his backpack and that is clovis's go next up we have nelly and nelly is going to do exactly the same she's going to move one and then two the movement into this room unhindered we would have problems obviously if there was you know a walker or any other zombie in the way we wouldn't be able to go through as quickly but there's nothing in the way of us getting into that room so we're all zooming in and we're all doing a search so nelly is going to have a search oh and she finds a dagger can be dual wielded and i think she's got a special yeah her slot allows her to put this in a body slot and that means we get an additional plus one on any weapon that she's holding i believe so and it can open doors on a four or better so yes gain plus one die with another equipped melee weapon so it's zero range obviously you get one die four plus to hit and it does a single damage so she is going to put that into her body slot so that's good news we found some stuff found some stuff while there's not many zombies on the board it's looking pretty funky right next up it's the big man the big wee man samson he's gonna have to use this hammer so he's gonna go one two and with his final action 
he's going to have a big heave at this fatty. So, come on, Samson. Come on, son. A six. Immense. Brilliant. Takes the fatty out. Two damage. Samson was the only guy who could do it, and he has not disappointed us. Goodbye, Mr. Fatty. So, he's been dispatched. Great stuff from Samson. So, he had a shield as well, just in case thing he'd missed and the fatty had got an attack. But as it is, the hammer has done the two damage. So, he's now got an experience point. So, excellent stuff from Samson. And that's the end of his goal. That was his third action. So, our final player is Silas. So what Silas going to do, he's going to do what all the others have done. He's going to go one, two, fall over. And what he's going to do is he is going to search. Let's get as much stuff as we can. And we found Dragon Bile. Remember I mentioned it before? We've got a torch. I think Anne's got a torch. And we've now got Dragon Bile. Now, we don't need it for abominations in this particular quest. But... It will kill anything. So if we do get a lot of zombies coming at us later on, we can lay a trap and we can fry them all, baby. So this is a good find. So let's just have a read of it. So spend an action and discard Dragon Bile from hand. Put a Dragon Bile token at range 0 to 1. So you'll put it down in a street or in a room and then somebody will wait with the torch and... As soon as all the zombies step onto the dragon bile, you chuck the torch and you just burn them all to hell, baby. So he's got dragon bile. Let's put that in his backpack. Great stuff. We are cracking on. We're doing pretty well. Uh, don't think I've missed anything, but um, we're doing okay. Right, that is the end of the player's phase. Next up is the zombie phase. Here we are at the zombie phase. Next up, activation. The zombies will attack or move. Now, they've heard this. And they can't attack because they've got nobody with them. But they would move if it were possible. But unfortunately, the fatty is just going to come up to the door. He's going he's gonna to bang and rattle against it. These guys will know he's in there. But he can't get through the door. He cannot open doors. But he's well aware that around here he's heard some noise. Similarly, the runner cannot get through this door. But he's heard something as well. If these doors were open, they would move in this direction. As it is, the doors aren't open, so they cannot move. Right, oh, what's next? What's next is we get a spawn. So we're going to get spawn here. We're still in the blue. And we get a double spawn. No! Double spawns. Now what we do normally is we would move to the next spawn point. Yep. And do two spawn cards there. We don't have another spawn point. Well we do but it's not active. So we're going to have to do the double spawn here. It's sort of coming round in a big circle. So it's bad news because we've only got poor old uh, we've only got poor old Samson here. So we get one walker. It can deal with that. And whoop! The next thing he gets is a runner. We need to get rid of that runner. It has two activations. So we get a runner as well. So there we go. Because they're spawning, they don't attack immediately. So he will, Samson or somebody else will have a chance to get rid of these guys just in case. Right, so that's the end of the zombie activation and the spawn. So let's move to the end phase. And here we are at the end phase. First thing, remove all the noise tokens. The goldfish zombies have forgotten all about the noise now. 
okay so we've re we've got rid of the noise tokens all that's left is to move the first player token the next player is baldrick so baldrick will be the first player next turn and what we'll do is i think we'll leave it there we've had a few turns we've done a bit of searching we've got some good stuff we've been particularly good at the killing long may it continue we've rolled a few sixes that's what we like so we've managed to get rid of a fatty as well which is pretty grim and uh, what we'll look to do next turn i think is we'll polish these two off hopefully knock this door open and try and get rid of this fatty um bit of a bigger challenge once we knock this door open the reason it's going to be a bigger challenge is I just noticed that this there's an opening here between this room and that room so both these rooms will spawn zombies because there is no door so we'll get two two lots of zombie spawns once we open this door and we've got a fatty and there's only Samson that can deal with it what I'll probably do is um, who's gonna go first it's gonna be Baldrick we might have Baldrick come out here, use his mana blast, try and kill both these two. If he doesn't manage it, after Baldrick, it's Clovis. Clovis will have to come out and do it. Whatever. Get some other people to kill these. That means that Samson can get towards this door. And he's ready for that fatty such time as we knock that door through. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this, the... Chapter the first of Zombicide, Black Plague, Dance Macabre. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for all the subscriptions. Anything I've done wrong, please, please mention it in the comments. As I say, I've got this first game. First game, I'm just praying that I've got nothing wrong. But if I have done, please, please let me know. Um, any comments, whatever, please feel free to put them below. Um, if you get a chance pop across to board game links and upvote the site if you like what you're seeing but as i say that's it for episode one so thanks very much for watching and i hope you will join me for chapter the second of zombicide black plague dance macabre until then this is me cat weasel signing off to loo